your stacked running back room, you got to feel great about what you put together there. And and getting guys to stick around like Mayan Williams, I know fans maybe were concerned he might transfer. You got you know Travion coming back. You expect huge things out of him. You got Evan Pryor. You got a good one coming in. Just what are your thoughts on this excellent running back room you put together? Yeah, it's a good group. Um, I love being around them. They're good dudes. They're good guys. They're fun to be around. It's fun to come to work with them every day. You know, you don't have to worry about a bunch of foolishness going on and guys taking care of the business, and they all can play, obviously. So we've got to find a way to get them all touches and all on the field. Uh, as far as people worried about mine, we, I had a handle on that the entire time. And, and um, mine and I have a close relationship, as I do with his mother. And, and um, so that was fine. And Evan Pryor, what do you expect out of him? I know it's... It's tough when you got two backs ahead of you, and you're, you guys are going to be throwing the ball, obviously, but he looked really good in the spring. Just what are your he thoughts did. on he, him? He had a really good spring and uh, developed the way we wanted him to. You know, he needed to gain some weight. That was a priority to him and to us. And, uh, so we did that. He bought in at full, complete buy-in to what we were trying to get done. He had a really good spring and a uh, good spring of development. It's finally starting to show some things that we thought he could do for our offense. And, and so really excited about where he's headed. He had, like I said, he had a good spring. And so excited where he goes the next step into the summer months. And Travion had one of the best seasons in history by a freshman back here, which is saying a lot. How much can he improve? What do you expect out of him in his second Well, just year? to continue to learn our offense and to, to, to entrench him more and more as far as his football IQ into our offense. Um, you know, I, I challenged him about some pass protection stuff, which I think he did um, in the spring. You know, he's getting stronger. I think that he was worn down by the end of the year. But you got to remember, he was a kid, much like Evan, who did not play their senior years in high school. So they went from their junior year, skipped the year, got into the fall. And I think by the end of the season, Trey was worn out. And um, so I know he's gotten stronger with Coach Mick and that program. And um, he's becoming more of a leader, which I asked him to do and will continue to ask him to do. And um, accountability's never been an issue and never will be. So yeah, I, I, I think that uh, he, he did. He had a good spring as far as his pass protection things. He's starting to learn the offense and become more and more comfortable and more entrenched in what we're doing. So it's, it's been good. And just one more for me. Uh, Travion told us when we got a chance talking in the spring, he's able to take care of his mother now through NIL. There's all this talk about out there about bad, how bad NLI is, but then you got the cool stories like Travion able to take care of his mother. What's your thoughts on that? It's such a cool story. Oh well, first of all, Lakeisha's awesome. She's what she has done, and there's other people involved now. His grandmother and one close to and some of his coaches at his high school and but what Lakeisha's done with her three sons you know he's got his brother and he's got the younger brother Keyshawn what um what she's done with those boys is amazing and, and the respect that they have for her is, is really a, a sight to see and um, so I, I can definitely see how we want to take care of her at the same time she's a mom just wants what's best for her kids she demands a lot she expects a lot and, and those kids are so far, thus far, have, have, have done those things. It's hard to talk about over when you look at Travion and all the talk about Jackson Smith and Jacob and CJ Stroud. It feels like nobody's talking about the running back here. I'm sorry. Do you guys like that? That was what I was going to ask. We're <laughs> good. You don't need to listen. Um, with all due respect, they don't need to talk about us. The less, the better. And, and um, listen, that's, that's for the fans to do talk about it. It gives them something to, to, to chew on, if you will. But our job is just to go play ball. Go take care of your business off the field, academically, socially, all those things, and just go play ball. Just continue to get you to, to improve on your skill set, be the best player you can be for our football team. And then people will talk about you. When, when need be, you'll be talking, you'll be spoken about. Until then, put your head down and go to work. Because here's what I'm going to say when people talk about you. They can flip on you just as quickly. Right, we've all been there too. So don't worry about what the what people are saying, good or bad. Appreciate what people do and say, and keep it moving. You need status update on Marcus. Yeah, so we're still working through that, and, and um, I know Coach Day will make some will make some announcements when need be. And um, but you know he did. He, he had a, another serious injury, and so we're just praying for him that he can continue to improve and kind of see where it goes. That's that's the best I can really tell you that we're still working on that. In this day and age with the transfer portal, how hard is this to manage a room like this where you're trying to keep everybody happy but really only one guy gets the ball under play? Yeah, it, you know, it, it can be challenging at times, but I think it goes back to a couple things. One, it goes back to 
the belief system that a young man has and his family has that you can develop their, their, their son and the kid believes that you can develop him as a player and as a man. Um, and two, this, this, this is a very transparent program and, and the brotherhood is very strong here. And so I think it's that, that guys kind of feel entrenched that this is, my, this is family here. And, and, and so to leave is, is hard at times. But I also understand, I understand the court, I get it. Um, as far as a coach, as far as coaching wise though, it, 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 it can get challenging at times because you feel like you're re-recruiting your room every week. And to some degree you are. Um, but I think if you have, as long as there's some transparent relationships going on and, and we're all on the same page as far as communicating what's going on, there's not a really a lot that you can't work through. Um, I, I mean, that's the best I can tell you. I mean, that, that thing is, you know, the highs and lows of the portal are, they are what they are. It's not going to change uh, anytime soon as far as I'm aware of. I don't know, I'm not on the rules committee. But uh, we are we are, and, and, and guys got to play. And, and, and if you practice appropriately and do the things you're supposed to do, play winning football, then we have to find ways. I have to find ways to get my guys on the field. How do you play that re-recruiting? Yeah, I mean that's something you tell me. You're the truth. Huh? You tell yeah. me the truth. I mean that's 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 kind of how I recruit anyway. I tell you what I think, and you may or may not like it. I'm going to tell you what I think. And, um, it just comes back again: transparent relationships and transparent conversations. And and here's where you're at. Here's where we're going. Here's what I think you need to do. Which I think you need to do better. And um, then we just keep going. And, and sometimes we're going to agree to disagree at times. There's some hard conversations that have to happen, but but as long as I think as long as you have a you build up equity as far as your relationship with people and kids or young men, I should say, then I think you're real okay. How do you how do you feel though, Tony, about people coming back door on the guys now and stuff? You know, you've worked hard to get them here to develop them, etc. But they're coming back door, and I don't know where your your own profession. I'm talking about the coach profession. Where do people have to like sort of like assess what's going on now and for one term do the right thing, but do you see that happening? I mean You know, um it's shady. It is. There's some backdoor stuff that I know firsthand is going on. You you you, you wish that we weren't in that space but we are. You know, I'm not going to be one of those guys that does that. I'm, I'm, but you know who you're dealing with, and you know it's just like anything else. You got to work around the parameters that are there. And you can say whether it's right or wrong, or just or unjust. It is what it is, and, and so you got to work around it. And, uh, until until somehow there can be some guardrails put in place. That here's how we're going to here's how we're going to function in this space. And you know, I, I don't have a concrete answer for it because I don't I don't I don't know how to. I know I'm not going back for it. Right? That just that's not, a, not how not how we do our business. But, uh, but again, it goes back to again relationships. It goes back to again the belief system and development of young men and players. And really, at the end of the day, that's what you have to hold your head, in my opinion. You talked about having a little, you know, being run down towards the end of last year, being tired. Talk about me? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, is there, I know you said you don't worry about everybody else, but is there a chip on your shoulder for how things kind of went down the stretch last season with these guys? What do you mean? Just kind of how they did wear down. Are they ready to get back out there? Again? Yeah, I, I think so. I think, with, you know, we go back, our rumors, our rumors really young. Yeah, yeah. Evan Pryor, Trey Henderson, the true freshman. Had Mayan Williams, who again had the COVID year, but by all intent and purpose, he didn't play a lot of football either. So you had a lot of young players. And, and so to say that that was disappointed in, in how the season went, I wasn't disappointed. We went, you know, I was disappointed that we didn't that we didn't win the whole damn thing. Um, but to be disappointed of to say my I'm disappointed how my guys play, I'm not disappointed. Do we need to get better? We sure does, absolutely. But to, to paint it as disappointment, no, that's 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 a stretch. Do we need to get better? Sure. Do I think that uh, another year in the program, uh, another year of development with Coach Mick and his staff, all of those things combined, another year of just playing football and learning the offense and um, in the daily grind of college football at our level through 365 days a year, it's not nothing, it's not new to them anymore. So they're going to naturally mature and get better as time goes or, there's, or we've missed. Right? And so, um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with where we're going right now. We still have a lot of improvement to go, we're not anywhere we need to be. But, but, I'm, but I'm pleased with the trajectory and that we're headed, and I'm pleased with the attitude of our players that they're, that they're fully invested in buying into what we're doing. So with that answers the question. Mayan seems like one of those guys where if it looks like it's going to be a three-yard run, it's a five-yard run, or a five-yard run, it's a ten. It just seems like he's so tough to tackle. Well, you got to get his, you got to get his big behind on the ground. I mean, the guy's <laughs> only three feet tall, so you don't have a lot of surface area to hit, right? Um, no, in all sincerity, you know, Mayan, Mayan, Mayan's a really, really good player. It may the way he gets his yards are different than the way that Evan or even Trey are going to get their yards, but they have enough speed to get around you. Mayan's got to kind of run through. You. But, um, but he's hard to get on the ground. And I think when you watch in the setting, running backs in the setting where they're not tackling, when it's tag off and those things, you come if you were come watch your practice, and it's like, well, you know the guy tagged him off. Well, yeah, but you still got to get him on the ground. And he's got to just make sure that he's running vertically and not, he can't go side to side. He's got to go downhill at people. And when he gets a chance to get his, to get his pads going downhill, he's got to do that. We saw that in the spring game. You guys were thudding up. It was like, oh, it's easy for them to stop my wounds. Once the, you had to go live, it wasn't that easy to stop my wounds. So he's going to get him on the ground. Right. And he's going to bounce off you and drag you in. And, uh, but he does have enough lateral quickness to make some moves as well, so I don't want to take that away from him. But um, we have three, I think, we have three really good players, really dynamic players in their own right, that are all different. And that can all pose different problems for defenses, that can all present different skill sets for offense. Have you ever had that running back room before the three different guys with that skill set? You know, um, I think everybody has their own different things that they do, but the vast, broad scope, probably not. It makes it fun, huh? You can, it does. I'll dial this guy. Sorry. I'll dial that guy. Yeah, because they all can do some different things. They all can do a lot of the same things really well, but then they all bring something a little different to the table as well. So it, is, it, it does make it a good situation for us. But what, yeah, what sets apart though is they're all special. I mean, and they all right. seem to have not just different, but they all special skill sets yeah. in their own right. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you play that? How do, as, as y'all said, y'all are just shooting the bull when you're when you're around during the off season stuff. Are you continually throwing ideas? Is it over up a on? cigar and bourbon? Yeah. Yeah. Are you continually throwing ideas up on the board in the? Uh, you know, no. We're going to run our bourbon. Our offense. Yeah, we're going to we're going to run our offense. Within the confines of offense, some guys are better suited for this. Other guys are better suited for that. Yeah. Um, you know, so this spring we haven't discussed how you know, exactly how we're going to disperse everything, but but um, we are going to run what we run. Yeah. So all of you have got to be adept at this because this is what we're doing. Um, now, if all of a sudden say, hey, we want to go do this, maybe we want to get the ball in the perimeter more. And, okay, maybe that's more. Hey, that's that's more. That's more advantageous than that prior meeting yeah. than running you know, tight zone. Yeah. Um, not that Devin can't run tight zone. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't want it to be right. predictable. Exactly. Yeah. Not that Mayan can't run around on the perimeter, but who's more adept at it? I'm not trying to get you.